Look, neither Sony nor Jerry Bruckheimer give a good goddamn that we hate these 54 seconds of logos. Hell, if they ever see this, they may make the logos even longer because f*** us, right? But this is my world, and I'm sending the f*** out of these 54 seconds of logos. Mike! <laughs> what the hell are you doing? It's called driving, Marcus. Marcus isn't used to this after... Checks my 24 years. I'm about to throw up. That is hand-stitched leather. You better drink it. It's not a bad boys movie if Marcus isn't about to do something gross in Mike's fancy car. Sigh. Guys, told me this one was good. The fact that none of these assholes on the sidewalks are the least bit curious or perturbed by the massive and dangerous high-speed police escort happening in the middle of South Beach tells you a lot about the strength of the weed in that area. Don't worry, I've already booked my ticket. Hey! That sins on you, Mike, for parking in front of a hydrant, prick. So the joke is that they weren't running from the police, they were escorts, because Marcus's daughter is having a baby? Do you know how many fools they nearly killed? How is a helicopter not a better option than several cop cars and cycles and a dozen near accidents? Jesus. Oh, it's the guy she went out with in Bad Boys 2, whom our two heroes pulled a gun on and berated all for fun. That date went so well, she went on to have a kid with him. The only world in which this makes sense is the one where the movie wants to score cheap laughs and the audience falls for it. Caged heat for life. I mean, if you're pulling a Hannibal Lecter, do you really need the witch part? And also, this is exactly a f***ing Hannibal Lecter, which is a bull ripoff, especially for a goddamn Bad Boys movie. El espíritu de tu padre ya está libre de las rejas que lo encerraban. So, he was a prisoner? Este fue el último regalo de tu papá antes de que muriera. So he was a prisoner that could gift pottery to outsiders? How did he gift it with the instructions to break it? You're going so fast on Papa details, I'm not really sure if he's a criminal or an amazing undercover officer. Tu padre encontró la forma de esconder millones de dólares antes de ser encerrado. Aquí están las coordenadas para que los busques. Just don't be fooled if Jesse texts you and claims to have found the money and even sends pictures of the money on fire. Él muere al último. So, it's a Revenge Against Mike story, only it's all made up and nothing to do with the first two movies? That sounds fun. We're here to celebrate and to raise a glass to one of our own. And by glass, I mean carefully labeled product placement that everyone is drinking at the same time. This guy John wicks everyone in the nearby circle before anyone can react and get a shot off. And no one moves that fast. Not even John Wick. I'm done, Mike. Up oh, here we go again. Weird, I've said the same thing to myself at least 30 f***ing times during the opening 10 minutes of this movie. It would take something absolutely bonkers to make this sequel somewhat unique. I'm talking bonkers. Like, Mike has to have an illegitimate son with a cartel or there are supernatural implications and that f would never fly in a franchise like this. This time is different. When I looked into that little baby's eyes, something changed. F*** off, dude. You held your own babies and looked at them in the eye and you had no problem. Just say you're old and tired and old. Oh my god, the ears! Yeah. It's hilarious to me that everyone has been commenting on how big Will Smith's ears are for ages. And they go down the ears. But this is the second time they've mentioned Martin Lawrence's giant lobes. What's ammo? Advanced Miami Metro operations. A small team trained in new tactics and investigative methods. New tactics? And new investigative methods? I'm sold. Gonna replace us old dogs. Or teach them some new tricks? I'd be happy if you'd teach them some fresh dialogue because this banter is stale with a capital really f***ing stale. Dumbass. What? She is perfect for you. Ah, I see we're going with the Vicky Vale, Selena Kyle transition here, where the love interest, which was a huge plot point in the previous movie, changes with little to no explanation from movie to movie. Was Gabrielle Union really too busy competitively working out with Dwayne Wade to be available for this film? Oh, hell no. I feel like Will Smith has built this phrase of dialogue as a writer into all of his contracts since Independence Day. Like, remember when he dropped an oh, hell no in the pursuit of happiness? And then again in the concussion? That was distracting. So they're about to foot race, and the bet is they either retire or they never retire. And that is a stupid bet for both these idiots. This may be the most hilariously overdramatic guy getting shot sequence of all time. Front wheelie, terrible CG on the blood splatter, slow motion. I feel like Drake getting shot in that very special episode of Degrassi was more realistic. Also, how the f did Armando know exactly where Mike was going to be at this moment? Maybe he knew they were partying at a certain bar, but did he seriously overhear the talk about the f***ing foot race? This is a group of highly trained police officers, and even if they're freaked out, no one attempts even rudimentary first aid on Mike. And no one even tries to pursue the suspect. They're literally just huddled around his ass yelling at each other. Hell, did anyone even look at the license plate of the motorcycle? Dear God, it's me, Marcus. Oh my God. If you just spare him, I swear to you, 
I will put no more violence in this world. Uncapable promises. This is personal for me too. Let's bring every single thing we got. As opposed to our normal investigations where we happily half-ass that and everyone gets to clock out at 4.30 just in time for the happy hour special at Buffalo Wild Wings. So Terminator Mom is upset he went after Mike first because she wanted him to see all the others suffer. And my question is, why did she send a hothead son she had to know was a hothead that made up his own rules? This is on her. This is a failure of leadership sin. Two government employees killed by sniper headshots and City should be in a full-blown serial killer panic at this point. And yet it's not. I mean, is this the worst way to go? The dude sipping VSOP at a pool party with a bunch of hotties. If Armando really wanted revenge, he'd have killed this guy on the can like Tywin Lannister or something. Is Armando seriously just Googling these assholes? to figure out where they're at? Is this judge seriously updating his Insta to let everyone know when he's walking out of court and Same shooter as Mike. We connected how? Traffic cams, witnesses, tire treads. So then all the same outfit of shooter as Mike, right? Black bike, same make, dark armor, and helmet could be a different rider each time, no? There are four different shooter? God, do cops in real life jumps to this many conclusions? Oh, f*** off, movie. I know this isn't a funeral. I'd sooner believe that Killmonger actually killed T'Challa halfway through Black Panther than I'd believe you killed off Will motherfucking Smith's character 20 minutes into this Bad Boys sequel. You guys are great. Ladies and gentlemen. Bad boys for life! Wow, it's like a group orgy of credits rolling. You know the rules. The rules, cat. This entire series in a nutshell. Amma's gonna find the dealer that supplied your shooter. Oh. Look, I know police work is hard, but it's been six f***ing months since they made that discovery and they haven't gotten anywhere. Did they not get the bullets that were used in the other killings to match them up? I hate to side with Mike here, but this supposedly elite unit is a little JV. That fool put holes in me! Man, he is angry about someone that shot him. And he's yelling about it to Marcus, a guy that he shot in the ass last movie. If that fool put holes in me was a trump card in this partnership, it wouldn't be Mike that would be playing it. A sign to turn up. Turn up? What are you, 20? Dude, it's weird that ever since he found religion, Marcus would be excellent at cinema sense. No, Mike. No. The end. Man, that was a short bad boys movie, because usually there are a lot- oh, he didn't mean that, no, did he? God damn it. Man found snake in his engine. That headline is the most Florida thing about this entire movie set in Florida. Expositional nostalgia via Google. expo -stalgical. Ah, the character cries single tear that was probably created by Eyedrop shortly before the director yelled action cliche. Video of a shooting of a Miami detective has surfaced online going viral in a matter of hours. This is really the weirdest Peloton motivational program I've ever seen. I know they think outside the box and all, but that's pretty f***ing dark. By the way, even though news operations can be scuzzy, this is some real nightcrawler for them to be showing the actual shooting video on a mainstream service. Mike keeps his shiny ass tower of hand weights out on the patio? Do you realize what the humidity of Miami, let alone a couple good rains, would do to these weights? You know they say you did, Boy. The irony here is that the meat cutter doesn't eat fish. Captain, come Wait, on. I know you guys got history together. It's always got to be someone sleeping with someone or reconciling with someone that they used to sleep with. Can't ever just be a man character and a woman character. Mike will consult. He'll observe. Seriously, how long do we have to sit through this? Mike's totally not going to take over. He's just going to consult and and not gonna shoot anyone at all because he's not all turned up and stuff nonsense. Picked up chatter. The dealer we think custom those Hersel rounds, he's making another sale. First off, do detectives seriously discuss super sensitive details about a case in the middle of the f***ing station like this? What if there are criminals being transported back and forth for questioning? This is like the lobby. Second, this is the only goddamn lead they've gotten in six months. Jesus, put anyone on this case instead of ammo and they'd find something. Have they even talked to DJ Khaled, let alone threatened him? No wonder they haven't gotten sh done. They have the same video of Mike getting shot on every monitor playing on a loop. And this motherfucker's working on his dribbling skills. God damn it, I hate this f***ing team. Ah, so you send the drone in. Mike Lowry suddenly becomes Will Smith's anti-tech character from iRobot before our very eyes. There are like 16 people in this meeting, some of which are looking in this exact direction, but no one notices the super obvious drone. Hell, it's not even a mini drone. I call that Big Barry, for f**k's sake. There's our deal. Audio? These will put a hole through anyone. Why did they wait on the audio? Why wasn't the audio feed broadcast with the video feed? No. I'm not risking the collateral damage. Arnold would have risked it. You know, in the late 80s, a popular trend for boys' haircuts, at least in the Midwest, was to shave two to three lines in the side above and behind the ear. This shot here makes me think of that failed hairstyle and laugh. Laugh at my own dumb youth, but laugh even more at this stupid ass for shaving lines in his beard and hair along the same line. <laughs> Loser. It says a lot about this movie that I'm actually relieved to see a goddamn shootout happen after what feels like 90 minutes of crying, exposition, and arguing. Not only is the rest of Ammo ridiculously slow to act, they're not even gonna call in any backup to at least help contain this obvious massacre. Hey, don't die. <laughs> Listen, the guy who shot Mike, he's trying to kill me. Bulls. 
Why is it so hard for Marcus to believe? Sure, he's retired, but he's had to have heard about the other fools Armando is off, and they all have a connection to Mike, like this dude. So this incredulousness is disingenuous, deleterious, outrageous. Please, man, use me as bait. Whatever. Look, when a former informant offers themselves as bait, you f***ing take that offer and find the bad guy and save the f***ing day, even if you're technically retired. What did I say? Hey, we've got the captain yelling at Mike Wow at the crime scene. I love it when they do this one. Playing all the hits today, kids. Coming up will be a reprise of the Diddy, Nelly, and Murphy Lee collaboration Shake Your Tail Feather 2, Money Never Sleeps. Not to get too Seinfeldian, but the f*** is up with this shirt. Why is this top button? How would it ever be possible to use that button? Even the second one would be a stretch, but that top one's nearly on the side of his f***ing neck. F*** that button. Just cause I f***ed your mother, don't make me your grandpa. Oh. That doesn't even make sense. Let's f***ing Carver Remy! Mike literally just went over how they need to be quick to act, and the body just fell into the car, so why isn't his ass immediately busting up to the top of this building to see who's there? Oh sure, he stunts Mike as a tempting look about as real as watching a CG character from Gemini Man on an iPhone 5. I know he's police, but that vehicle would definitely be impounded as evidence in the murder of Snitchy McWhat's face that landed on it. Jesus, look how easy it was for her to drive the wing. This lack of effort really makes me miss NBA defenses. Where are you going? Where are you going, Mike? What even is this scene? Cap called Mike up and said, hey, meet me at my kid's basketball game. I have some wisdom to impart. Bingo. Wait, suddenly Armando has help? So f time he's been a lone gunman. Now the rando guy with the Post Malone tattoos is helping him take the captain out? You're telling me that everyone left the funeral before Mike and Marcus? Family members didn't want to have the last moments at the burial site to themselves? No. One last time. One last time. Can you just unretire whenever you want though? Also, this is definitely the case because this movie didn't do anything at the box office. Hell, it was a January release and 2020 is all f***ed up. Let me check. That's gonna be multiple last times. This is like a Jay-Z retirement announcement. This is a pretty great apartment, except for one thing. All these four levels above to the right can see whatever naked fun time you have out here in the pool. Unless you're saying Mike owns all those levels too, in which case, what a waste of money. Hey, hey, yes, look her. I'm gonna fast food fist you. I can't tell if this dialogue was written by Shane Black, Kevin Smith, or a drunk fourth grader. And because of the confusion, let's add three cents. Mike puts his gun away to settle this with fisticuffs. And why do people in movies always do this? Eh, the other cops taser the guy before the fight can happen, but Mike didn't know they were there. He was really gonna go to punchies with this discount John Goodman. Bring it, big boy. What the hell are y'all doing here? I call. Hold on, Marcus didn't even know about this lead until Mike told him on the way to the apartment. So how the did he tell Ammo about it? And when have they shown that they were capable of getting the drop on anyone? If you're celebrating, there's three spots for a cat like that. Mm. Ditto, Ice 45, Zillion. <laughs> you narrowed down possible birthday spots for a mid-level criminal from all of Miami. Down to three spots? Three? That's amazing! What if he's a child at heart and still likes Chuck E. Cheese? What if he stays home and orders some strippers and blow? She makes a big deal out of this being a non-lethal raid, but they are all using rubber bullets, which, if The Last Castle has taught me anything, and it hasn't, can actually kill. As the Bad Boys theme song from these movies and the show Cops plays, I can't help but think about how rich Inner Circle must be. He's not even wearing a goddamn disguise of any kind? Mike is the most well-known cop in the city right now. He's just gonna cruise up into this club like nothing. This is like Edward Snowden walking back into the CIA and sitting at his old desk like nothing happened, a la George Costanza. God damn it, why do bad guy parties always rule? Blade, Triple X, Godfather 2, Eyes Wide Shut, Wolf of Wall Street, Rules of Attraction, hell, even Bad Boys 2 had one of these. I wanna go to a bad guy party, god damn it. Stay with the A-plan. Kelly, you're on Zoya with bodyguard. I know they have radios, but I still refuse to believe they can hear a goddamn thing in this place. Have you ever been to a club? You have to scream into the ear of the person you're dancing with, and even then you have a 50-50 chance that you're so hot gets her to suck my c Just wishing my birthday on one, three, two, one! Happy I guess I see why Rafe is such a detective, considering he's apparently been spending all his time getting embedded into this club as the trusted house DJ. I'm not gonna play it, cause music companies be dickheads, but the movie is now playing a song by J-Lo and DJ Khaled, who's already a non-DJ Khaled character in this movie. This breaks the whole suspension of disbelief. I was fine with everything up until now, but this is too far. This works. Hell, Eddie Vedder couldn't even pull this trick off on the 10 tour back in 1992. Look, I don't want to belabor the... I'm belabored. But aren't there four other detectives in ammo that were supposed to be strategically placed? And Zuelo runs right through them like the 49ers against the Packers in the 2020 NFC Championship. This complex plan by a special unit police force to arrest a guy that had no one stationed outside the door. No one! Zuelo just turned left on 2nd Ave. The f***? How do they know that? They got a guy in a van, but I didn't see any scenes where anyone homing beacon Zuelo. What the hell What's he saying? Marcus has worked in Miami as a cop for several decades, but doesn't have a handle on even rudimentary Spanish. You dead. No, no, 
Mike. I made a promise to God. See what I told you? The movie only had him make the promise earlier so that he could hem and haw for action comedy laughs later. I don't need no gas laughs. Then you ain't hitting Well, to be fair, he could be hitting one of these completely innocent cars that are just driving down the road, not being criminals. <laughs> what? I like how the driver of this truck just keeps on going after the car in his bed blows the up. He's like, they pay me to tow it. They don't pay me to retrieve it if it was blown up by some random dude with a pistol in a high-speed chase. Besides, if I get home in time, I can probably catch the end of Vanderpump Rules. We can't do this as an outtake anymore, since music companies will stick various things in our various orifices. So, there goes. <clears throat> Orchestra hit! Piano, 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 piano. This is the end. Hold your breath and go to ten. That's Waylo's phone. Can you break it? Well, considering the dip you just took, I'll assume you have to put it in a bowl of dry rice for at least 24 hours first, but after that, I guess you can talk. I'm gonna have to go on the, on the dark side. All right. You good with that? Yeah. Every single Bad Boys movie has a hacker saying something is impossible or illegal, but that he does it anyway. Every single one. Though, in the first two movies, it's the same guy. An average basketball player whose name escapes me. He looks like a killer. Is used to be a bouncer. Guy one night was getting physical with the woman. Yeah, big man lost it. Hit him. Master job dead. What did the fight ever since? But he kept the fighter bouncer's body? Anyway, the point is, we're gonna see him beat some ass now that this is out there. Probably even one punching someone to death. This is Chekhov's manslaughter story. We're shut down. Almost done. Oh, and right when they were really hitting their stride, too. I think he's my son. What? Hey, Mazel Tov, who's got a cigar? Sure, he's tried to murder you multiple times, but it's not every day you discover a new love child. 24 years ago, before we partnered up. Wait, you're saying that the first Bad Boys movie was their first year together as partners? Stop spitting out years if you're not gonna do the map. His wife, Isabel, I was her driver. So fresh out of police academy, they send a black guy to Mexico to infiltrate a cartel by becoming the cartel leader's driver? I'm not saying it's impossible, but when you say it out loud, it sounds kind of hilarious. We connected so Deep, we talked about everything. You thought Anakin's dialogue in Attack of the Clones was bad. He's the right age. He's crazy like me. He's ruthless like me. He's fearless like me. So f***ing what? You had a better argument with the timeline of her arrest and giving birth in prison. This son of a drug lord's widow being ruthless is not any kind of a proof that you're his daddy. God damn. So Mike is going to Mexico to, I guess, surrender to the witch lady or maybe f*** her some more, I don't know. But Marcus cares and wants to help and somehow finds out not only that Mike is going to Mexico, but also what flight he's on and manages to buy the seat directly behind him? What is this, Convenience Airlines? She'll make you fall off. I'm in penis. You should be minding your own business anyway. Okay, a few things. First of all, assuming that's her dad behind her, and I'm sure it is, nice job sitting the whole thing out, dad. Second, penis is probably as bad or worse a word for a teenager as There's no safety here in medical terminology. Third, she probably was minding her own business until the grown ass man next to her started loudly talking about falling off. Killing your own son, brother, that's a darkness that swallows you whole. Just ask Thomas Jane from The Mist. Pro tip, if you're having a torrid affair with the cartel's boss's wife, who also happens to probably be an evil supernatural conjurer, maybe don't take a picture posing like you're on your honeymoon. That sh will bite you in the ass every time, trust me. Could a cab seriously not drop them off nearer to where they were staying? Even if they were trying to keep their location a secret, at least drive them up that steep ass hill, man. Wait, the last time he looked at Zuelo's phone, that screen was cracked as hell. So how the sh is it so pristine now? Did he stop at the airport in Mexico City to have it repaired? I suppose it's possible, but come on, it's really not possible. They're in Mexico, ready to go meet Mike's son and try to arrest him, and there's a knock at the door. They draw their guns because they've never seen a movie before, so they do not realize it's the rest of the ammo team. Honest truth, I've never seen this movie, and I'm 100% confident that I'm right. Watch me now. You gotta be quick to get past me. I'm from Erie, PA. You called him again. Thank God, otherwise this mission would be f***ed, right? And it's just like this bumbling band of cluster nuggets to knock on the goddamn door without announcing themselves instead of calling ahead, or at least saying, hey dude, it's that incompetent asshole that you're eventually gonna bang. Don't die. You make sure we both come home. My favorite kind of movie love interest is the kind where all the action happened before the movie, and the movie just hints at it and mentions it, but doesn't do anything of substance about it at all. Those kind of movie relationships rule. I jerk off to them. He's going to a place the bad guys know he will be, and he knows there will be a sniper, and this is the ending of Assassins, and you can't convince me otherwise. I don't think I've ever seen a more obvious drone in my entire life. This drone might as well be playing the ice cream truck song on repeat at top volume. It's so obvious. And the dude says he's jamming signals in case they're running counter-surveillance. Like they can't look out with the naked eye and see that obvious drone. 
This place is wasted and dilapidated, yet somehow a huge stained glass dome has remained entirely intact. Let me see with this. I just lost all comms. Oh, the entire surveillance system for Mike was isolated to that one super noticeable necklace? You put all the comms in that one necklace? Doesn't seem very practical, right? Shouldn't it at least still be work? God damn it, these movies piss me off so much, I want to tase a coked up accountant right now. When a Mexican standoff actually happens in Mexico, is it just a regular standoff? How many bullets can a drone this size even carry? This is automatic gunfire. That's many bullets per second. You have any idea how heavy bullets are? Big man, I'm gonna need you to hurt some people. I'll pay for the therapy, aye? Right? Well, if it's anything like the therapy they showed in the last Bad Boys movie, Dorn is about to get a bunch of free blowjobs after this mission. This one shot up the center column thinks it's hot as it spins and lifts through the various floors of CGI conflict, but at the end I still have no idea who was where, who might have been injured, and who gives a This is pretty cool, I'll admit, but it was in the trailer, and it's nowhere near cool enough to make up for all the lame leading up to this. Okay, so it's at this point I'm checked out of any reasonable stakes or action in this movie. Homeboy reached up through the ceiling of the story below and pulled Mike through the goddamn floorboards. This movie has some surprises. The captain getting killed was legitimately a curveball, but now we've moved back into a regular bad boys, i.e. every action movie finale ever, and it's tedious as f***. She's using a shard of glass as a weapon. If she's cutting him deep into the muscle, then her hand is also taking damage and maybe even about to fall apart in half. Hell, add some white doves and even hokier dialogue, and this sh might as well be the end of Face Off. He let him live? Well, since it's a movie, the kid will respect that somehow, I bet, and not kill Mike for attempting to choke him out earlier, or the whole mom avenging sh <laughs> Holy hell, when did this building become a gateway to Satan's lair? Abort! Evacuate! Everyone leave now! <laughs> Rita ex machina. And was it really necessary for it to be her? Was Marcus really gonna sit there and watch Mike get his ass killed? Gotta be some guns lying around here somewhere, right? <laughs> you and you and you. I hate this turn for this <laughs> tool. He's killed a lot of dudes. To our new captain. Thank God she drinks Heineken, which is second on the list of job requirements. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? Tell you what I'm gonna do at this point in the movie is get opportunity may have presented itself for you to pay down some of that debt you interested holy shit, it's the anti-suicide squad and it looks even worse run we have found the witch may we burn huh? make sure you click that bell icon <clears throat> sellouts but clicking the little bell icon is how you make sure you get notified every time we release a video so click it <clears throat> sellouts he was the black sheep, permanent pariah. He asked no quarter of the bosses and none was given. We're gonna need some uh, loyal employees. Wants a job. Our operation is small, but there's a lot of potential for aggressive expansion. I win, we lay it down. We turn in our papers and we retire. As I choose not to run. Lord, hallowed be thy name. May our feet be swift. May our bats be mighty. Do it. I don't know if you can hear me in there, but the wrong key died. It's my daughter's wedding, Mike. Do we have to do this right now? Uh, yeah. What have I ever done to make you treat me so disrespectfully? You lay me down some cover. Come with me if you want to live. Oh, what? You embarrassed to be seen like this? Dodson! Dodson! We've got Dodson here! See, nobody cares. Kill shot! That's a kill shot! You jump to conclusions. You see, it would be this map that you would put on the floor and would have different conclusions written on it that you could jump to. Yo, Mike, they're moving up to the chopper. Get to the chopper! 